as many of us know, DuckTales on the NES was awesome. And so was the Game Boy version. But is DuckTales Remastered any good on the PlayStation 3? A little look. Remasters are still going on strong, but such a big leap from the 8-bit graphics to what we see here, surely there's got to be something wrong with it. Well immediately this looks stunning. From first impressions I can see that they've really put some work into this. The characters look so good just like the cartoons. But it's a game that really matters. You start off trying to stop the Beagle Boys from stealing your precious loot. Not only that, you have to save Huey, Dewey and Louie. You'll encounter three beagles in which each one has one of the nephews trapped in a cage. It's just a simple task of pressing a button to get rid of the beagle. But this isn't meant to be a hard task, just a tutorial to control Scrooge and get used to the controls. Once completed, a note will appear showing the locations of the treasures across the world. From here you can go to a hub section in Scrooge's mansion, where you can go left to view various artwork, music and character profiles. These will be locked and can only be unlocked when you have accumulated enough money through the game. Most of the items remain locked until you've spent enough money in each of the sections. In the centre of the pub you can go to the money pit where you can dive in from the top and have a little swim around. Scrooge will also spit a load of coins out just like in the cartoon. If you go to the right in the pub you'll access the computer where the fans of the original may recognise this screen. The level selection screen. There's the same levels to choose from, which are the Amazon, Transylvania, African Mines, the Himalayas and the Moon. Scrooge only has a few moves and they are Jump, Jump and Pogo Bounce and the Golf Swing. You start off with three hearts for your health. These can be topped up with ice creams that can be found through the levels or in some areas they will be cake to fully restore your health. Hidden in blocks in various parts of the terrain there will be jewels that can be collected to top up your fortune. There are yellow and red jewels to collect. The small ones aren't worth much, so I'd stick to the big ones. There are hidden areas that can be found by passing through a wall, which can reveal extra lives or extra hearts. In the Amazon, you'll face the same enemies as you would in the original, but now they look really nice, and some are still bastards. There are coins to collect through the stage, and they can be found in large treasure chests throughout. But don't worry if you can't find them all, just pause the game and look at the map. And this one had an there are white dots to show you where they are, and they aren't too hard to find. Throughout the game this map will be a lifesaver for when you can't find certain artefacts. It shows a whole level so you know exactly where to go. And while you're in the menu, if you're feeling brave, you can turn the pogo to the original mode where you have to press down and attack when you jump. Once they are all collected, you can use them to gain access to the next area. The difficulty ramps up when you go underground, with irritating spear throwing tosses and spikes. The boss at the end is a lot harder than you may remember in the NES version. Rather than a few simple jumps on his head, you'll have to avoid sliding stone columns. In Transylvania you'll find this to be increasingly difficult with low visibility and ghosts flying around in some areas. The minecarts are here but there are more of them and if you're not careful they can catch you out when you have to jump to transfer from one to another. Once all pieces of the script have been found you can access a large mirror to take on Magicka to dispel. And she isn't too difficult to beat, she has a few tricks up her sleeve but nothing that's too difficult. The African mines aren't too bad to get through, there's a few sections that may catch you out on your first try but it won't punish you too much. The boulders are here to chase you down the steps but as long as you don't stop to collect all the gems then you shouldn't have a problem. The boss is like the original and with a few extra attacks he'll throw in just to make it a little bit more challenging for you.
The Himalayas has the dreaded snow which you can't pogo on but you can bounce off enemies. The psychotic goats are the ones to watch out for as they bounce fast across the screen. Throughout the level you'll need to find spare parts for launch pads plane in order to finish the level. Once they've been found you can take to the skies, but you'll have company. It's Flintheart Glomgold who doesn't want you to get to the treasure. Once you've golf swung the bombs back to him, you continue to the boss. And I was not expecting a character this big. His movements are exactly the same as the original, but a slight difference in the attacks. The last stage is the moon. I don't remember the original being too hard to get through, and this isn't much different. The start did catch me out a couple of times trying to grab the chain to get into the ship. You eventually come to the boss, which is a rat on speed, and again timing is everything with this one, but it isn't too difficult. But it's not over as Magica comes Sorry, down and steals that. your treasure and your nephews. nephews you strike a deal with Glomgold and head to Mount Vesuvius to rescue them. After travelling through the volcano you'll be up against Dracula Duck who was a lot harder than the original. You still have to bounce off the bats to get to him, but now Magica casts spells and adds more challenges to this boss. I'd like to say it's easy to overcome, but it isn't. There's hordes of bats to avoid, a fire breathing dragon and Dracula's huge head trying to bite you. Once he's defeated it's a race to the top to claim your dime back. This wasn't easy as it was in the original. You have to jump across platforms instead of simply climbing a rope. Get there first and the treasure's yours. But is this game better than the 8-bit version? Yes and no. The original is just an outright classic and the remastered version is just as good. The graphics are simply amazing, the details are perfect and the added details to the background give it so much depth. And the sad thing is you probably won't even notice them that much when you're playing. They kept as true to the original as possible with all enemy characters looking the same but much more detailed. The bosses are beefed up more so they do look like the boss instead of a normal enemy. Just look at the abominable snowman, he's huge, or should I say she. The animations are spot on too, with facial expressions and movements that look just like a proper cartoon. The sounds are great and the music has been redone and it sounds unbelievable. You can tell it's the original soundtrack but with real instruments. And even when the credits roll you get the theme song from the cartoon series. What really made me say wow was the end boss, Dracula Duck. The animation here is just stunning and it made me think that they've really gone all out with this remaster. If you're looking at this and you think it doesn't look like the original, then take a look at these side by side and see the similarities. I played through this on easy and I can honestly say it wasn't that easy. I did try it on normal and struggled to get past the first level. It is a challenging game, far more challenging than the NES version, but it's so good that it didn't make me want to give up. 
this is the best remake of the game I've ever played. Capcom didn't mess around with making this game. They put everything into it and it pays off. I'm just gutted they didn't remaster DuckTales 2 as I love that game. It's starting to creep up in price now, so get it while it's at its lowest. It's we definitely worth it. Dime. Return safe and sound. But like a Scrooge, but well, what about the treasure? Yeah, we had it and we lost it. Sorry, Uncle Scrooge. Come on now, boys. We may not have got to keep the treasure, but we had the adventure of a lifetime. And best of all, we got to share it together. You, Webigail, Launchpad. And Epworth, too. Don't forget about Mrs. Beakley. And Bubba, and Benton, and Gyro. They helped us, too. <laughs> Indeed they did, lads. Now come on, let's head for home.